thoughts from the trail. What a difference shade makes. It really does make me wonder about deforestation. It's probably not just about temperature. There's probably more to it than that. Time to investigate. Really nice temperature in here. A lot cooler than in the, than in the sun. I love this little uh, green space here behind the apartments. It's here because there's a creek, but uh, I wish all cities had areas like this. There's obviously um, birds and animals in here and uh, it's cool and just provides relief from the sun. And you could probably hear the noises in the background, but um, wouldn't it be neat if, and I know it's not economically viable, it's, you know, developers try to develop every square inch that they possibly can, but uh, it'd be so good for the health of the planet and, and humans if we had more green space. Okay, so I was asking uh, what's the impact of deforestation and uh, from my research it looks like one of the biggest impacts is on biodiversity. 80% of the world's plants and animals are in forests and uh, when you eliminate, eliminate forests you eliminate a lot of plants and animals. Um, it, creates, it creates an imbalance. Um, I remember watching a video once about the reintroduction of wolves and how that uh, you know, wolves were, you know, people are afraid of wolves and they're hunting wolves and killing wolves, but reintroducing wolves into certain states has created a balance because they take care of, you know, that means other species don't get out of control. Um, also, I mean, I was wondering about the heat and uh, the cool of the forest is necessary for lots of plants and animals to survive. And um, we're all connected. So when we, when everything's connected, and when you eliminate certain plants and animals, again, that creates um, an imbalance and that impacts human life as well. Another thing affected by deforestation is people's livelihoods. And um, this stat actually blew me away. 1.8 billion people, um, their livelihoods are impacted by forests and are, are dependent on, on forests. There, a lot of people are still hunter-gatherers and I, I, I forget that or didn't even know that. Living in a, in a suburban and urban setting, I wouldn't have ever thought that. So as deforestation happens, and these, it's a lot of these people are the poorest people, they're in de developing countries around the world. As deforestation happens by corporations, they sort of have a choice to either leave or join them. So deforestation impacts people's livelihoods. This is another favorite area of this trail for me. Uh, there's a tree canopy and there's uh, kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. And when you come out of here, you come into this, the end of the, uh, of Noon's Creek and it just seems so full of life and it's it's pretty <laughs> but yeah there's lots of wildlife in this area i've seen bears and um, eagles and crows and canadian geese and fish <laughs> and so i'll just turn the camera around and you can see what i'm talking about <laughs> Another impact of deforestation is uh, soil erosion. And um, you sure see it along this trail. 
the impact of of trees and um, how that you know they drop their leaves and the trees themselves fall and branches fall and uh, it helps to create healthy soil and um, when you have soil erosion uh, you have all kinds of natural disasters like uh, floods and um, landslides and stuff like that we often see those in the news and maybe you've seen some crazy videos on on YouTube as well <laughs> also again um, you know healthy soil and healthy forests feed the planet so they feed insects they feed themselves and and there's a real concern over the health of our soil as well and how that impacts our um, food supply okay, so the last point I want to make about uh, deforestation is des desert <laughs> desertification or desert oh man the last point I want to make about climate change is the last point I want to make about deforestation is climate change um, you know we have expanding deserts and um, you know increased co2 and uh, because forests you know take in co2 and, and pump out oxygen so they give us uh, healthier air <laughs> and um, actually agriculture is a huge contributor to co2 emissions like 24 percent of the co2 emissions on earth are caused by um, by agriculture and 10 to 15 percent are caused by actual deforestation so obviously there's some things that we could we could do there and that brings me to my next points is uh, what what can we do all right I'm here on my bench I call it my bench now <laughs> I've been coming here for a while and and really like this spot. It's a place to sit uh, next to the ocean and, and just be quiet. So one of the things we can do if we choose to is to eat less meat. Um, not to pat myself on the back because I didn't really do this for environmental reasons but I became a vegan almost exactly one year ago and I did it for health reasons but I do like the fact that it does help the environment as well like I said in the previous point agriculture is a huge contributor to, to co2 emissions and um, also you know they're taking down forests so that they can grow soybeans and grow palm trees and also they got to grow all this food for cattle so agriculture is a huge contributor and one of the ways that we can help is by actually eating less meat or cutting it out entirely another thing we can do is to actually consume less like I have a friend who uh, during the course of a year like this is fanatical but he figures the amount of garbage and waste that he produces could fit into one of those Rubbermaid containers. I mean, that's, that's, that's commitment. <laughs> but that will also help the, the environment and, and lessen the impact, our, our own personal contribution to deforestation. The third thing we can do is use less fossil fuels. Um, it's been interesting, hasn't it, during COVID, I think we've seen you know, working from home. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, I, I drive maybe only once or twice a week. And uh, also I live in a great area. I'm really fortunate that I can use SkyTrain and, and uh, we have car sharing. And we actually got rid of one of our cars. So again, not to pat ourselves on the back. It wasn't, I wasn't doing this for environmental reasons, but I do, it, 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 it is possible and uh, I like that we've been able to do those things because I think they, they do help the environment. Another thing we can do, and I need to do this 
better is just to figure out how to support those 1.8 billion people who rely on forests. I guess, you know, support organizations that are helping those people and are um, and, and concerned about deforestation and doing something about it. I just want to add too that something that we can all do is get outside. Like when you connect and you're out here, um, you, you have, you, your appreciation for nature grows and we are so disconnected these days. And that's one of the main things that I've been doing lately is doing meditations and sharing things about actually connecting with nature, you know? <laughs> this sounds trite, but you know, if you're connected to nature and nature is your friend and you're seeing what's going on out here, um, you know, you're less likely to do it harm and you're, you're more likely to be concerned and to, and to help. And the final thing is we can raise awareness. I think, you know, when you're out here or you see things that, um, it, that are contributing to deforestation or, or nature is being impacted, you can, you can um, raise awareness. You can talk about it in these days of, of social media and stuff like that. You can bring awareness and attention to those things. Um, I have a nephew right now. I'm so proud of him. He's heading up to an area where uh, they're they're cutting down old growth forests, and he's going to join the protest, which I just find amazing, and I'm I'm just so proud of him. So, yeah, this all started with this video. All started with a little bit of curiosity. What is the actual impact of deforestation? This is Noons Creek, another really beautiful, neat part of this trail. Hang on to the camera, I seem to be shaky right now. <laughs> In thinking about this, I'm just reminded of how everything is connected. And um, I once had a pretty profound experience of how all things are connected. I, I won't go into it now, but um, I'm just reminded of that. And um, it might seem like just little old me can't do much about deforestation, but you know, just an example of how th all things are connected. Um, it takes 2,400 gallons of water to produce one pound of steak. <laughs> so, you know, just by me eating a little bit less meat, that means that there's more um, water available. And, uh, you know, water is, is a concern and um, and the, and the amount of water is connected to deforestation uh, because of agriculture is such a huge contributor to deforestation. And so just maybe just meet 2,400 gallons of water is not much, but um, if that was 100 people eating one pound less steak per year, that'd be 240,000 gallons of water. And so you can see how there is a compounding effect and how together we really can produce um, change and make for a healthier environment. And just how, how everything is connected. Our actions matter and the, the little things that we do add up and can help and can contribute to 
a healthier planet. And um, I, I'm thinking not just for myself, I'm thinking of future generations. And, um, and a lot of people are saying we're at a crisis point and uh, you know, if we're paying attention and want to do something about it, there's things that we can do.